thank you very much for a um, good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. Uh, very glad to be with you, even if, um, well, I, I do it from Zoom and from Paris. Uh, I let me share my screen. I hope you, can you see my screen or not? Okay, so this is, um, what I'm presenting is a, a work, the work that we are conducting, uh, we started conducting two years ago, a year and a half ago, in Southern Thailand with my colleagues, so Dr. Olivier Evra, who is social anthropologist, and uh, Sorata Rotanahat, who, um, so, who is an archaeologist from the Fine Arts Department. So in the context of the history of uh, Indian Ocean trade, Southeast Asia has long been relegated to the role of crossroad between South Asia and China, through which pass foreign merchants and mer pilgrims. Southeast Asia has also long been assigned the role of suppliers of precious goods and maritime goods sold by foreign markets. Such perception largely resulted from a misper misperception of local polities, uh, local model, political models, and in particular of its multi-ethnic component. Amongst the various uh, ethnic groups forming part of the trading polities in Thailand, the collectors who mobilize goods from specific ecological niche. Lords from the lo lowland cities dependent on these groups that provide, provide in them goods that made their port polity more attractive than others for merchant trade, mer merchant, uh, for merchants. Um, if forest collectors' role and the evolution in relation to trade have been the subject of a number of ethnographic and archaeological studies, such is not the case for the ma various maritime groups and amongst those, the commonly referred to sea nomads. Interest in the history and archaeology of these groups is fairly recent. This should be this change is chief to be understood in, a, in the context of a series of academic change, some specific to Southeast Asia and others are more global. The Lanta Bay project introduced in this paper was designed to document both the ancient and contemporaneous maritime cultural landscape engaging some of its present day social groups, and in particular, the Uroklawoi, some former sinomads. These former sinomads so moved there in Southern Thailand sometimes about 100 years ago, centuries ago, sorry. And they form part, this is one of the minorities of the kingdom of Thailand. Nowadays, they are impoverished, encouraged to settle down and denied access to some of the traditional resources now under the jurisdiction of the very protected national parks. Located on the beach, the graveyards often, are often destroyed to the, due to the construction of touristic complex. If the Iroklaoi are little regarded in contemporary society, and are relegated to secondary economic activities, this has probably not always been the case in the past. Oral histories and linguistic, um, and linguistic reveal that they have been key players in ancient trading networks, interacting with some of the successive trading polities that control the Malacca Strait, a major corridor for Indian Ocean trade. Sea nomads, uh, and all the maritime groups fostered a highly specialized knowledge of the territory that they exploited for economic purposes and um, where they performed their social and ritual activities. Their activities represented, um, uh, their activities, representations, the stories are reflected in oral histories and in the physical world, so symmetries and cave paintings, often located along the shore or in islands offshore. In Southeast Asia, the study of islands, cliffs, hills, and caves uh, offshore has been disconnected from the study of trade networks, despite the fact that they are part of a long established communication and navigation network. These places can constitute strong symbolic territorial elements for, the, for local communities and for their identity. This is all the more valid in the case of uh, highly mobile groups such as sea nomads for whom these landscapes represent a vast network of culturally and historically significant places. By engaging contemporaneous maritime com communities, this project aims to be beneficial for the local communities of the island of Lanta and the Uraklawoi there in particular, 
for the archaeological and historical disciplines as well as for heritage preservation. So, the, so this is the quick la the layout of the presentation. After a very quick overview of the historical and historiographic background of, um, and also of the community archaeology in Thailand, uh, this presentation will summarize the project's preliminary results. Those suggest that integrating contemporaneous, sorry, this is difficult for a French person to say, contemporaneous groups knowledge in our practice already appear beneficial both for the academic discipline and for local groups. So just a little bit of the background, historical background. Uh, so uh, of um, uh, trade uh, in Southeast Asia. So like in South Asia, uh, Southeast Asia is characterized by a great environmental, ethnic and linguistic diversity. This diversity and the fragmented nature of the environment have fostered the development of distinct socio-economic organizations, as well as, a, as well as interdependent relationships between these socially and economically distant groups. In maritime Southeast Asia, trade known in historical periods is based on the interlocking of these different networks, ecologically specialized networks. Although these groups interacted in exchange, they preserved complementarity of lifestyles and economy. This complementary, uh, complementarity was valued and encouraged the maintenance of cultural differences in the past. So far from the Western model of territorial and centralized power, maritime Southeast Asian polities relied on social network and on labor control. So until the emergence of nation states, sea collectors, traders, uh, also referred to as nomads, were fully integrated in the political structure. So in Southeast Asia, early trade policies emerged um, when the region became fully involved in the, in the Indian Ocean trade, so from the last centuries BC. And the course of the Thai Mane Peninsula witnessed the development of the earliest port polities, some of cosmopolitan nature. Those welcome traders from different places and other groups like Sinomats too. And some uh, settled down there, giving this uh, multi-ethnic um, landscape that is typical from the Thai Malay Peninsula. And that you can be found nowadays still in Kolanta, where this project is focused. So as I said, um, the interest for minorities and the cinemas in particular is fairly recent. Um, this is uh, in history and archaeology. Yeah? So uh, this is also because uh, for a long time, Southeast Asian, uh, both historian and archaeologists of Southeast Asia focus on great continental civilizational centers. So Angkor, Pagan, Tricum, uh, Mysan, and uh, on the remains left by the elite, um, the literate elites, literate elites. So, um, but uh, I will summarize this. Um, so the, this is only very recently that in archaeology um, there is an interest in minorities and the relationship to empires like and especially the Angkorian Empire. So it is in this broader context um, that Southeast South Sea uh, nomads ancient history, their role in trade and political developments and questions on the remains that should be associated to their activities began to be addressed by a handful of archaeologists. So. Quickly, who are the Sinomads? Sinomads uh, can be defined as a suite of live livelihood strategies based on the exchange of fragmentary maritime resources. Um, these scarce resources can be distributed over vast areas and they include basic commodities, but also commercial goods and even luxuries that, that they fetch from far away. Nomadism uh, exists because these resources can only be exploited by actors willing to conduct opon opportunistic trade. Um, transporting goods from isolated port and along non-standard routes. These groups exploit well-defined areas as their sea territory. They expect them for their subsistence, as I said, but also for trade with community, sedentary communities. Um, this, the sea nomads are almost, uh, almost exclusively engaged in, with the sea for their subsistence and for their occupation. However, it is important to stress that the, beyond this common denominator, the wide range of adaptive, adaptive modes of and level of mobility characterizes these people, sea people. Um, and the term covers highly mobile groups living on beaches like the Uruk Lawoi, 
and, and, and other groups like the Moken who are really semi-nomadic. So briefly, the Oroklawoi, uh, who are they? The Oroklawoi are very, um, are very poorly known. Um, strictly speaking, they are more strand dwellers than sea nomads. Um, the, they traditionally lived on seasonal villages on beaches, not in boats, unlike the sea nomadic people, uh, Moken. They are a Malay ethnic group, nowadays living, as I said, um, now, nowadays forced to live permanently uh, in villages. And in the, they live in southern Thailand, I have the northern entrance of the Strait of Malacca. Uh, historically, these islands are, um, that we focus on uh, in the Thai Malay Peninsula host marginal groups like pirates and sea nomads. The two being often confused by external observers, whether being Western observers or Chinese observers. So about the origins, uh, there are different versions uh, in the um, different versions of the oral histories. Uh, some place it on Mount Gunungjerai, which is in Kedah in Malaysia. Gunungjerai is the landmark for sailors approaching the west coast of the Thai Malay Peninsula where several port polities developed, um, developed from the late prehistoric period. Uh, in reality, some linguistic reconstruction uh, suggests that the Oroklawoi were probably originally land dwellers or fishermen from Sumatra who made the choice to leave, sometimes at the turn of the second millennium. The presence of direct loanwords from Sanskrit, Sanskrit in the Oroklawoi language indicate that they were involved in trade and had sustained contact with the Indianized maritime kingdom of Srivijaya. The letter, was sent, the letter kingdom of Srivijaya was centered in Sumatra, but also included large parts of the Thai Malay Peninsula from the 6th century to the 13th century. So what is the situation uh, of community indigenous archaeology and indigenous archaeology in Thailand? Well, this is also very, not very developed yet. Uh, it's still a fairly rare approach. Um, so I would mention one project, although belonging to a very different environment to the maritime one, um, which is the one in Southern Thailand, this project, research project conducted by uh, Professor Rasni Shukong Dej uh, is located in the Northern province of Mayang Som. Um, so Northern Thailand, and but it's useful because it provides parallels to some of the issues we deal with in Southern Thailand. Um, this uh, region of Mayang Son um, borders the Shan state in Man Myanmar and is a multi-ethnic one. And this region, uh, the culture of this region, according to um, Professor Rasmi Shukundesh terms, is marginal to Thai Buddhist main mainstream culture. Ethnic groups moved there recently. Um, and the issue of management, of her heritage management, was there particularly daunting in the context where this heritage, uh, according to her term, do not belong to anyone, and local ethnic groups there do not relate to the remains that were found there. So, quickly, what, is, uh, what are the, the methods of the project? The, that we use in the Lantabe project. Um, so these are, they combine traditional methods of archaeology, so survey ex and, and hopefully our excavations, but also there are some uh, ethnography called interviews conducted by uh, Olivier Evrard and Sorachat Rotanahat. Um, so the, the methodology uh, focus on contemporary um, communities knowledge of the landscape they live in and what forms part of the heritage. Um, which are considered uh, not only as a use of um, as a source of information for archaeologists, but more importantly, as a heuristic tool to take into account local perceptions or interpretations or valuation of the past. And because of the because the Uruk Lawoi uh, interact and evolve, evolve with other groups uh, locally. Interviews were conducted uh, were carried out with the Uruk Lawoi, but also with the other communities. We also conducted interviews in the frame of participatory mapping. Uh, participatory, participatory mapping is a means to have maps produced by local populations in conjunction with academics. Uh, it is a bottom-up approach uh, to science as a means to collect local histories to help interpreting heritage and remains. 
For local communities, this approach helps them to be incorporated as active subjects in the registration and interpretation of their cultural heritage, as, as well as in the defense and management of it. So the results. Um, so in terms of archaeology, the project located several rock art paintings previously unknown in this province. They are either isolated or on the cliffs and visible from the sea, or grouped uh, together in rock shelters. In those uh, caves, some disturbed archaeological remains dating of different periods were can be found, found, and they 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 some related obviously to um, funerary deposits. Like many places in Southeast Asia, caves, even those in islands and uh, um, off Kolanta, have been used for multiple purposes over a long term over a long period of time. So now I'll show I'll summarize briefly the results uh, of uh, our uh, work. Although still at, uh, in the preliminary stage, interviews and participatory mapping with the three main social groups, so meaning the Chinese community, the Thai Malay fishermen, and the Uruklawoi provided insight, insights into their different knowledge of the territory, oral histories, the interactions and respective role. The locations of the different groups re reflect more or less uh, ethnic differentiation going along a distinct ethnic division of labor. Each group also has a different sense of history, of temporality and of marking events that can be material, materialized in the landscape. These differences are clearly reflected in the maps and in the oral histories. So three main types of information emerged out of these interviews. Uh, some may be useful to integrate in the context of an archaeological and heritage community program there. The first type of information, here you see a map which has been produced by memory by the Uruklawe community. So the first, um, the first type of information concerns the territory, the place is suitable for settlements and where groups conduct their economic and ritual, ritual places. Each group provided stories on their origin, how they, how they chose to settle there. Um, each described the territory in relation to their labor, labor specialization, but also how they interact with other groups for these activities. These chi Chinese communities may refer to places significant for trade and industry, Thai Malay fishermen farming, um, uh, talk about farming and sea routes, and the Uruklawoi talk, talked about meaningful, play, meaningful places, either as places for settlement, resource procurement, but also for ritual and places they avoid. The Uruklawoi also mentioned places that are forbidden without specifying, specifying yet what those, what those were. Some of these information may be used to elaborate some sort of predictive models uh, to locate and economically and or ritually important places. The second type of information uh, concerns navigation, uh, sea lanes, winds, place to shelter, and exchange network of interest. And this information or of interest for archaeologists and historians. The Lanta Bay and its islands provided shelters indeed for boats and was midway uh, along what used to be a vivid route um, from in the 19th and 20th century. Different routes can be used according to the winds and the islands are, as places for shelter, to shelter. The local knowledge of sea lanes, winds, resources, location may also be useful um, to understand some of the rock art motifs and the distributions in the islands. Also of interest are the different marketplaces that were cited um, and used during, throughout the year. Some also trade, uh, some networks were associated to rituals. Perhaps partly paralleling ja Jacques Ivanov, the social anthropology specialist of, specialist of Moken's account of Ko Pratong, an island in the Panga province, um, where the Moken and Moklen were meeting. The Uruklawe also mentioned islands where the different Sinomats group were meeting uh, and where they were exchanging for certain occasions. If confirmed, um, the Sinomats accounts of islands being seasonal meeting places for these groups and it is, could be significant for historians and archaeologists to understand secondary networks 
So beyond the traditional markets places in Port of Straits. So this could be yeah, interesting for, for our reconstructions. The third type of um, uh, results, uh, last set of information concerns the local group's absence of links with uh, archaeological remains and the Uruklawoi avoidances for the caves. So none of these groups spontaneously mentioned them during the interviews. However, we know that they are visited, these caves are visited as remains left on the floor of these caves indicate. Beyond the possible form, form of reluctance, uh, the negative answers given by our host there could also be understood as reflecting a tendency to avoid cases for various reasons, religious or more pragmatic, forbidden access as part of the national parks regulations or due to birds nest economy under the control of armed groups. It also certainly emphasizes, uh, emphasizes the absence of direct cultural and his historical links between the occupants of the caves where rock art has been found, which estimate varying between 5,000 to 2,000 be, uh, years before present, and the current population there. Um, however, certain prohibitions and speeches about the presence of a dangerous character in certain caves, caves and in those, where, uh, in those where shell accumulates could represent an indirect evidence of the avoidance for ancient remains. The head of the Oroklawoi community told us that exploring caves was not part of their culture. They were afraid of the Loksue, a spirit looking like a small sized human with long hair and a strong smell, living near caves and piles of shells. They said this kind of spirit has a tool to chop the sh shells. It has a black shining stone. This local mythology may correspond to the lost memory of past encounters of pre previously occupied places. Jacques Ivanov observed similar behavior amongst the Moken and Moklen uh, in Southern Thailand and, and Myanmar. Um, the Moken would avoid remains left by previous unknown populations. But the Moken do not avoid all archaeological place remains, and what is avoided uh, is not or not is not very clear. For instance, Jack Ivanov mentions mentioned that the Moken remember ancient trading ports, historical ports location, um, like Kokokao, dating of the first millennium, late first millennium AD and also that they, this would visit a form of shipwrecks. As far as archaeological research is concerned, the evidence of uh, specific places and caves in particular, and the stories about dangerous creatures there may represent indirect indicators for archaeologists to, that they can use to locate archaeological places. This would correspond to places charged with ritual or symbolic power and where remains, remains of previous population can be found. But when it comes to develop a community-based heritage preservation project, this avoidance may not, be, may not provide uh, solid grounds. Useful parallels can be found with Rasni Chukondesh multi-ethnic community-based project in Northern Thailand. The ethnic groups present migrate there, migrated there recently and, ha and had no sense for their local heritage. So in conclusion, the, one of the issues of this uh, workshop is how can we use the indigenous uh, knowledge systems to understand the lo local history and how can our work contribute to sustainable development objectives? Although the project is still at an initial stage, our two fieldworks, um, ethnographic fieldwork indicate that uh, archeologists uh, social anthropologists and local uh, indigenous communities can learn and benefit from this integrated work. From the point of view of uh, the academic disciplines, the group's knowledge uh, provides new frameworks to locate and interpret the re ancient remains and historical events, enriching historical reconstructions. Methodological developments are, uh, are other expected outputs of this collaboration in the fields of indigenous archaeology and uh, here also in the field of uh, the archaeology, developing the archaeology of cinemas. Subsequently, a better knowledge of these maritime groups uh, may allow repressing them into the broader historical narrative. From the local, history, uh, local group's perspective, the valorization of their knowledge, traditions, and enriched history 
may contribute to their empowerment. So, so corresponding to sustainable development goal 10. Subsequently, this may prove these minorities may, may improve, sorry, uh, these minorities negotiating power to access or preserve some of their culturally meaningful landscapes, such as graveyards and other ritual places. The heritage management could project could be as much uh, about the archaeological remains as it is about as it is about those of current groups, as in the case of their ritual places whose historical nature has so far been denied. I thank you for your attention.